Hello my friends, welcome back to my home and garden. For today's video, I am going to show you my upper side garden. This is actually located in the backyard. I am very excited to show you this row of the upright tall garden plots. So these tall upright plots, they are perennial. It means they can back year after year. And also, they can grow from 3 to 5 feet tall. And they also have a different color. You can find them in red, purple, lavender, pink, white, and orange. But here in my garden, I only have the white and also the pink one. So where can you plant them? Plant them in the area where they can receive full sun. They can also grow in a partial shade, but they don't bloom as much as they have in full sun. The blooming season are from summer till early fall. When you plant these tall upright flocks, make sure to give them at least 18 inches apart. And also in my case, I use them as a border and plant them as a row like this use them as my privacy between my neighbor as you can see i put them a little bit closer just to not giving any gap but i add also a different plant in between them like this lace cap hydrangeas and also some climbing roses so in terms of watering i water them twice a week if the temperature rises up then i water them every day and also Remember to water on the root zone instead of the overhead. Water them on the bottom part of the plant, like this. And not on the blooms. That's the overhead. I fertilize them once a year during the growing season. You can also fertilize them even though they have flowers. In terms of propagation, I have two ways on how to propagate them. First, I divide them. Second, I collect the seedlings. After they bloom, I don't collect the seeds. I usually let them drop the seeds and that way they produce seedlings. So let me show you some of the seedlings that I can see in the bottom of this plant. And also, I can actually collect all of this. So here, I can see this one is separated from the clumps of these big blocks, and these are actually the seedlings. So this one, I can pull this easily, and they have a good roots already. So you just need to make sure to pull them um, and carefully, or else it's just going to rip in the middle, like this one. But the proper way to make sure to put the pressure or pull them here in the bottom part so you can you can also get roots like this so they only have a tiny root and that's okay this one will survive and then usually I will transfer this on the pot and then once I know where to put them then I can easily transfer them in the ground Originally, I only have one plant of this upright flock, and then when I started to collect all the seedlings, I created a row like this. As you can see, from that white pergola, it's actually all the way to the upper side gates. So on this side, I also add this fuchsia. So this is the very end of the row and then on the other side I actually add some lace hydrangeas and also I started to see a different color on this side this is also the pink or it's like a lavender color of the tall garden plucks and I only have this color and this clumps so I have to start propagating them and let them seed so they can drop that on the ground and create the seedlings. So this is all my lace hydrangea. So this is the other end of the flux row. So with this connection, it takes about 
five years because I have to actually collect each year and some of them I don't have enough seedlings to collect so it takes a while to make a row like this but if you're lucky so each year if there's a lot of seedlings that which is I can see it right now in the bottom of this box there's uh, this one can be added on the lower side garden and I can create another row like this because I have another project that I'm planning to remove all the crocus media and add the flax instead. So the way that I landscape or design this area, I planted all the flax in the back row and then also add the smaller plants on the front. So like the uh, daffodil, tulips, the wood hyacinth, which is, you're not going to see all that plants because they are already done blooming and I already deadhead them. I have some primroses here in the bottom, which these are the evergreen or perennial plant. And they don't die, they just stay like that and then they will bloom again during springtime. So I put again the upright flux on the back and added also the lace cap hydrangea which is they're almost in the same height and then I also added some daisies which is again you're not gonna see it it's already done blooming and also some of the hellebores in between which is they're still uh, babies or small um, and I want all of that plant to have a separate time or season to bloom so like this one as you can see all this row is the season of the flux so the bottom one they usually bloom starting springtime until about June and then this flux started to bloom about July once you enter the upper gate this is your view that you'll see a row of this tall upright garden blocks and they are really so beautiful from this side you will really appreciate when you put them as a row and make them as a border and then here if this is your first visit to my channel then this is what my backyard look like this is the center of my backyard and then I'm going to give you a quick view from the middle one on the pavers I will stand up there for you to see on how the flocks are doing from that side and how the view and how beautiful that you'll see from that middle garden so this is another view I'm actually standing on the pavers area and this is the view of this beautiful tall upright flux and you'll see they are so bright and from here actually I can smell them so let's talk about the blooms and the scent of this flux they grow flowers in clumps like this this is actually about six to eight inches and also they have a sweet scent and also what I like about this plant they bloom from July till September and they attract hummingbirds and butterflies they are also deer resistant let me give you a close-up look of this garden flux that I have it in my garden this one they're actually called paniculata flux or the common name are tall flux or sometimes called fall flux they have these tiny blooms that shape like a trumpet before they open like that and then each flowers they have five flaring loops so majority of this flux that I planted here in the side garden it's either I have this white one or this pink one so this pink one this one is called Eva 
column flux. They are sometimes called plain flower flux. And also they have this warm baby pink blossoms and they have this hot pink eye on the center. This one is actually very good as a cut flower for display because they have this sturdy stems and same thing with this white one. This pure white flowers called David Tall Flux. They have this dark green foliage. And they're actually mildew resistant. Majority of the flower color that I have in this side garden are white. And then I add this pink one. And then this year, I actually add this lilac color. This is also the David Tall Flux. And I only had three blooms on this side. And they are very nice to combine with the white blooms and also with the blue blooms of the lace cap hydrangea. In terms of deadheading, I usually wait until all the leaves turns brown and then I will cut them back 2-3 to three inches above the ground. Okay my friends, I hope you enjoyed the video for today and also for my next video, I will show you how to deadhead all these beautiful flocks and also show you how to propagate them. Remember to hit your notification bell so you will be notified for that video. And I'll see you in my next one. Take care.